There's a common phrase, you might be a homesteader if... Today, I propose that you might be a homesteader if you've dealt with these chicken problems and hopefully found some of these solutions. If not, maybe this will be a crash course in solving some of those common chicken issues that come up, especially if you're just starting out. When these little yellow fluffy nuggets come, you had better be ready because they need your care and attention right out of the box, literally. Most chicks are packaged at the hatchery and arrive via mail within three days of emerging from their shells. They're hungry, they need water, and a safe warm place to grow out. And they'll grow quick. We've tried several models of mobile chicken coops. And for our meat birds, this John Siskovich tractor is a winner. It's lightweight, plenty of room for up to 30 birds, and helps us get them moved around the entire property, making the most of our land and the healthiest grow out with a low risk for disease. One thing that is challenging about our seven acres is that the chicken tractors can get marooned or caught up on our uneven ground. And then we found out about the chick lift. And we'll never build another tractor without this feature. The install is quick and the design is sturdy. You basically create a fulcrum at the back of the tractor and the wheels on the chick lift let us move over rough terrain with minimal effort. Even our kids can move it. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. So once we installed the lift, we added the additional pull kit wire, which allows us an easy way to customize to our own homestead. Homesteading has a lot of problem solving in the normal day today, and this was a simple solution to help us get the most of our chicken tractor and give our future chicken dinners the best life anyone could offer. You want your meat birds to be on fresh grass each day. When this tractor is full, we move them twice a day. It is more effort, but by being in a fresh spot, you can reduce the risk of disease because they aren't walking in and eating around their waist. Their brains are engaged hunting for bugs, their crops are healthy with the natural grit present on our property, and the air is never stifled or requires a filter due to airborne bacteria. Pasture-raised poultry will always be your healthiest option when stocking your freezer with chicken. I've found there are two kinds of folks in this world. Those who lean in when we talk about chicken processing, and those who scroll onto a video about turning a shed into a house. Figure out which one you are real quick, because we're about to get into it. I love a good, slow, traditional homestead life, but I'm so grateful for the tools we can access to make our work easier. This is a chicken plucker, and when processing 20 plus meat birds, this tool makes start to finish much faster. Everyone has their own system for bringing their birds from chicks to chicken dinner. A primary goal of ours is that any animal we intend to eat has a fantastic life and one bad day. All right, so we have the meat chickens. I put them on the road so that hopefully they didn't eat as much grass, less poop and everything. I did give them water because it's just hot. We have our killing station right there. I need to get a bucket underneath that. Then we have scalder getting that up to temp to 147, 150-ish. Somewhere around there, I think. Then we have the yard bird chicken plucker. We'll split. <laughs> you would be lucky that I'm even doing this. The evisceration table here. The knives that I got just were, were from Amazon. I don't know, this guy, Ultra Source. And then here's a Victor X. I think Victor X is a known brand. Then Kelly is cleaning the coolers. Gonna get them iced down so that we'll do the stations. Once they're all done, birded up, we're gonna cool them off in the coolers. The links for these tools are below in the description. Quick disclaimer. 
We make a small commission off of some of these links and that commission helps us bring you more free content here. So thanks for your support. All right, you're the first one. Eviscerating can be the most intimidating part of processing day. You want to clear all those organs from the cavity and maintain a clear workspace. We have three rounds of meat birds from chicks to dinner under our belt. But this part of the process is where we see the fruits of our labor. And unfortunately, this round was a bummer. We kept these birds with less feed and more forage. And instead of six weeks, we actually let them grow out for 10. The results were a leaner, lighter bird. And this breed grows quickly. And while we had very few losses, we would have liked to see more meat at the end of our process. Here's one of the coolest parts. Nothing goes to waste on the homestead. Most organs like the heart, gizzard, liver, and even kidneys can be saved in the freezer and pureed into ground meat dishes like shepherd's pie and meatballs or chili. My favorite way to preserve has been in the freeze dryer and then blend them into a powder and then add them to everything. The feet are fantastic animal treats, but I never miss a chance to add them to my bone broth for added collagen and nutrients. Our freezer is packed to the gills with previous chickens, half a cow and a whole hog. So we saved on some feed and shared these goodies with the pigs. That's why we will always have pigs on the farm. They really are the garbage disposal. They're going to eat everything. Final step, don't blink or you'll miss it. If you've hung in this far, you're basically homesteading already. This is what a whole day of processing chickens looks like. The rich reward is a cooler full of chickens ready to bag and freeze. And some folks will take this time to part out their birds and store them in smaller portions of chicken legs and breasts and wings and thighs all separate. But we never do that because we're so lazier than other homesteaders. And we really like the ease of cooking an entire bird at once. So we cool them off overnight in ice. And then the next morning, grab a quick cup of coffee with raw cream and get to work bagging and weighing these birds. Put it in the bag, uh, head down, because you want the cavity. Now, we should have done this better with how we prepared these. We did it last time to where you tuck the feet to get a better seal. I guess you, you could do it with like a rubber band or something to really do this, but then Joel Salatin taught this thing where you can do it with the skin. We didn't do that this last time, so we need to do that next time. Then you put the straw in, all the way down the cavity, tuck, try to seal it up as much as you can. Then you put it in the water and usually you'll hear some of the air come out of the straw and it's usually about 5 to 15 seconds. I think that's brilliant. We're going to take it out. Living sustainably on your homestead starts with raising and growing your own food. I hope this video gives you some insight, dispels a few myths, and inspires you to take your next step.